important uh, data structure for a graph. So let us now get started with another uh, data structure for a graph which is called shortest path trees or minimum weight path trees. So for that we look at the Dax's algorithm uh, for finding a shortest path in a graph. So the shortest path means, you know, by, you know what is a path? A path is the sequence of edges between two vertices. So the sum of the edge weights should be the minimums between those two vertices. So it's called the shortest path. So let me use an example. So if this is the given graph. The minimum weight path from the source or from this vertex S to X is going to be this path s to w, w to y, y to x and the weight of that path is 3 plus 3 plus 1 so the weight is 7 that's the minimum weight of a path from s to x now you see that this such a path has in this example 3 edges whereas in the given graph you can see that there is a path from s to x involving just 2 edges of weight what 3 and 5, 3 plus 5 is 8 so even though it has fewer edges, the sum of the edge weights is larger than this path from S to X. So that's what we are targeting. So by shortest, you should not confuse with minimum number of edges. So what we are really trying to find is minimum weight path between two vertices. Okay. So that's what we call here as a shortest path. So the sum of the edge weights should be minimum. Okay. Now, you should also understand that a uh, minimum spanning tree need not involve minimum short, uh, need not involve shortest paths. So let's take up an example here. Uh, it's the same graph in the first example. Okay. All right. So uh, you see here um, for S to X. Uh, this is a kind of different edge weights, but I st can still come up with one. Okay, uh, between S and U, right? So S and U, there's a path of weight four. Okay, and do we find such a path in the minimum spanning tree between S and W? No. So we find a path between S and U of weight three plus one plus two, which is six. So that is the kind of thing you should also understand. A minimum spanning tree need not contain a shortest path between any two vertices. It could. What is the example for that? Let us pick up X and X. So S and X you have a path 3 plus 4 plus 1 which is 8. Which is also 3 plus 5 which is 8 in this case. But uh, does the minimum spanning tree have 1? Yes. So 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1 which is 8. So it could have, but not in general. So that's what you should remember. In a minimum spanning tree need not contain shortest path between any two edges. It may have, but not guaranteed. Similarly, what we are going to find now is using this Dax's algorithm, uh, we are going to find what is called a shortest path tree starting from a particular vertex. Okay, so that's something you have to know. A minimum spanning tree does not have a root. It's kind of spanning all the vertices. Whereas the shortest path tree that will be found using the Dax's algorithm is going to have a root or a starting vertex. So what we are going to eventually find is the shortest path tree from S to every other vertex. Okay, so that's what we are going to find. Uh, from a starting vertex, the shortest path to every other vertex. Right, so that's the Dax's algorithm. Now, uh, the that's what you're going to find. So let us now look at the working principle of Dax's algorithm. So it's called the relaxation principle. So the relaxation principle, I can explain using this example here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a sequence of iterations, and in each iteration we are going to find the shortest path from the starting vertex S or you can also call it as a source to some particular vertex like in this example here I have found the shortest path from S to W so when I, when I say that I have found the shortest path from S to W that's the best I can find in this given graph I cannot find a path of weight whatever is that from S to W or uh, uh, there cannot be any other path of weight less than what I have found in that iteration 
say in some other iteration I have found the shortest path say to another vertex V that means this edge weight from 3 uh, S to the V is 3 plus 1 4 that's the best I could find in this graph I cannot find any path of weight less than 4 from S to V in this graph so each vertex we say we have, uh, so in each iteration we say we have optimized the vertex that means we have found the shortest path from the source S to some vertex in that iteration okay so that's what we do in each iteration so let us say in general uh, in some particular iteration we have optimized this vertex u that means uh, with that iteration I have found the shortest path from s to u I cannot find any other path of weight less than what I have found so far from s to u so now using that optimized vertex u you are trying to see can we reduce the estimates of the shortest path weights add to the other vertices because to begin with you have only estimates of shortest path weights to all the vertices and so you go through the iterations you are finding the optimal weights or shortest path weights to each vertex so now by going through uh, that optimized vertex u you are trying to see whether you can optimize some neighbor of u or not optimize reduce the estimate of some uh, shortest path weight to a neighbor of u so let us pick some numbers that will make things clear so let us say uh, we have from s of course from s to s the path weight is zero you can reach from a vertex to itself with weight zero so let us say u is the vertex optimized in a particular iteration so the path weight from S to U is 40 and there is some other vertex V which is a neighbor of U and the path weight from S to V is 70. So now what I want to explore is can I reduce the weight, the estimated path weight from S to V from 70 to something less than 70 by going through U since that I optimized U in that iteration. So if I go through U to reach V from S to U the path weight is 40 so for a path I indicate with wavy line like this for H I indicate a straightforward line like this okay so the weight of the path from S to V by going through U is going to become like what 40 plus 5 45 is it less than 70 yes so in that case what can we do we no longer need to use some path like this from S to V of weight 70 I can reach V through U so we can say u becomes the predecessor for v on the path from s to v so that means in order to reach v we have to first reach u and then take the edge from u to v now we can do this only if we can reduce the estimated path weight of s to v from whatever it was before to something less than that value from 70 to 45 let us say the weight of this edge uv is 35 in that case if you are to go through u to reach v the weight of the path from s to v will become 40 plus 35 75 that is actually greater than 70 so we don't want to increase the estimated pathway to vertex even further even higher we want to reduce it only if possible so in that case we will uh, keep that whatever the current path you know from s to v as it is you won't change it so this is called the relaxation principle and this is what we will do in each iteration okay all right let me just take the time how much we have okay we have some time so let us complete one example all right so let us pick up this graph so as i said initially we start with some starting vertex s and say the weight of the path from s to itself is zero and to the other vertices we uh, don't know the weight of the shortest path so we start with a very larger estimate so if you are implementing this will be a very large value as the estimated path weight to some every other vertex so in theory we say it as infinity as the estimated path weight to every vet other vertex so now what we are going to do is uh, so we will have a set of vertices that are already optimized and a set of vertices that are not yet optimized as we go through the iterations so to begin with s is the only vertex that is optimized we have found the shortest path from s to itself of weight 0 and all the other vertices are not yet optimized that means we have not yet found the shortest path from s to the other vertices all right so in, e uh, in each iteration what we will do is among the vertices that are not yet optimized uh, we will uh, pick the vertex with the smallest edge weight I will make a small correction. As part of initialization, we will also assume S is not optimized yet. So, in the beginning of the first iteration, we are going to really pick the minimum among all the 
vertex weights, which are 0, infinity, 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 so which is 0. So that is the smallest among all the vertex weights that are not yet optimized. So I will say that corresponding vertex which has a minimum among the, all the vertex weights in the non-optimized category has been indeed optimized. So we say for the first iteration, uh, sorry for the initialization S is actually optimized, right. So we pick that S and then uh, what you call relax the neighbors of S which means like what I just explained by going through S can we reduce the path weight from S to any of its neighbors like in this case the weight of S to itself is 0 0 plus 3 is 3 is it less than infinity that we know currently from S to W and the answer is yes so we make it as 3 and we make S as a predecessor for W because uh, instead of going to some hypothetical part of weight infinity from S to W now we can reach W from S through S itself so that's the uh, it's called the predecessor edge or S makes the predecessor for W similarly 0 plus 5 is less than infinity so we can make S as a predecessor for B and make the path weight as 5 Similarly, 0 plus 4 is less than infinity, so make it 4. So, at the end of the first iteration, we have 3, 4, 5, infinite, infinity as a weight of the unoptimized vertices. Okay. So, now what we do? First, go to the second iteration. So, in the second, beginning of second iteration, among 3, 4, 5, infinity, infinity, we pick the smallest weight, which is 3. So when I pick that weight 3, the, I say the corresponding vertex W is optimized. That means we have formed the shortest path from S to W of weight 3. Whatever you try on this graph, you cannot find a path of weight less than 3 from S to W. And later we are going to prove actually in the in next class that property. Okay? So right now we assume that the property is true. So now we are going to relax the neighbors of W. That means by going through W, can you reduce the weight of the estimated weight of the path to its neighbors? So let's see. So V is the neighbor of W. Currently the estimated path weight for V from S is 5. Now by going through W, can you reduce the weight of the path further? In this case, yes. How? Because it is 3 plus 1, 4 less than 5. That means we no longer use this edge as the predecessor edge, we will use this edge as the predecessor edge. So that's why I remove the highlight on this edge and highlight this edge from W to V because that will reduce the weight of the path to V. Now it is 4. Similarly, 3 plus 5 is 8 less than infinity. So it's less than infinity so we can make it 8 and make this as the predecessor. 3 plus 3 is 6 less than infinity so we can highlight this edge and make this 6. So at the end of the second iteration, we have 4, 4, 6 and 8 as the vertices that are not yet optimized. And among these four vertices, we can pick the smallest weight, pathway, uh, vertex weight which is 4. Now you have a tie, you can pick either U or V, it doesn't matter. You can break the tie arbitrarily. So we pick this vertex 4. Uh, so let me check if it's time. Okay. I'll get five more minutes. So now when you pick this edge uh, vertex weight, that means I have optimized V. That's the shortest path from S to V of weight 4. That's the best we could do. So now relax the neighbors of V. So the neighbors of V are U and W, Y. But you see, from V, can we, uh, through V, can we go to S neighbor with a reduced weight? From S to V, it is 4. Now 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 is not less than 4. So that means we'll just keep it as it is. We won't redu uh, change it to 6. We want to only reduce it if possible. We don't want to increase. Similarly, 4 plus 3 is 7. It's not less than 6. So if we are able, if this edge weight was say 1, 4 plus 1 is 5 less than 6, then we would have done what? We would have removed the highlight on this edge and highlighted this edge and make V as the predecessor for Y and change the path, estimated path weight to Y as 5. But in this case, it is 4 plus 3, 7, not less than 6. So we'll stay with what we know. So which means we cannot do anything to the neighbors of V. So we'll just keep it them as it is. So at the end of this third iteration, we have 4, this 4 for U, and then 6 and 8 as the weight of the vertices which are not yet optimized. So for the next iteration, we'll pick the smallest among those weights, which is going to be 4, corresponding to U. 
Now you see both the neighbors of you are already optimized, so we cannot change anything from there, right? So we just so that's the end of the iteration actually. So now for the next iteration, we'll pick the smallest among the remaining vertices, which is six and eight, which is six. So when I pick six, the corresponding vertex y is considered to be optimized. That means the minimum path weight from s to y is six. We cannot find anything less than six. So now try to relax the neighbors of y. So the only neighbor of y that is not yet optimized is x. Let us see if we can reduce the path weight for x. Now 6 plus 1 is 7 less than 8. So yes, we can reduce the path weight of x. So by going through y, we can reduce the path weight of x. So we remove the highlight that we have on this edge. So this w was so far considered as a predecessor to reach x. So we no longer need w, we will go through y to reach x and that will be reduced path weight 7. So at the end of this iteration only this 7 corresponding to x is remaining. So when you have only one vertex, we also say that is optimized by itself. So when you now put together all the highlighted edges, what we get is a shortest path tree starting from s. Okay. So from S, we can go through every other vertex on this tree. So from S to W, we can go to like this. From S to Y, we can go S, W, Y. From S to X, you can go S, W, Y, X and so on. And this itself is a property which will prove next class that a sub path of a shortest path is a shortest path. That means you have a path from S to X like this, S, W, Y, X. And all the sub paths, which are like S to W, S, W, Y, are also shortest paths. So the property we are going to prove next time is the sub path of a shortest path is also a shortest path, which is very obvious from this case. Right? So let me stop here and convert this to a video. If you have any questions, you can type.